Impossible. So it's finally happened. A Crisis Core re-release. I've wanted this since the 7 remake was announced. Figuring it would be a great lead up to the Final Fantasy 7 remake while we wait for that to come out. It is a prequel after all, but that didn't end up happening at the time. But with that ending, there was a renewed interest in Zack. So the discussion started again. Many people said it wouldn't happen due to the artist Gokt and his involvement and likeness as Genesis. But it seems they've ironed that all out with Genesis intact. Nothing shall forestall my return. So today, we're going to do a quick comparison of some places featured in the game. If you're not aware, I've created a series comparing Final Fantasy VII to its remake in great detail on my channel. Five episodes are done, and a few more are yet to come, so you can check those out if you're interested. But for Crisis Core, I'm not going to go into the same level of detail since many things are consistent between games. So I won't be going over the improved combat system, or lower encounter rates, the BMW changes or user interface, the summons being reanimated, or the character model updates, outfit differences, NPCs changing, or less transition screens, cutscenes being prettied up, added voiceovers, difference in wording, or even the change in voice actors. What the hell did you do, Amgeal? So you have no problem bombing this village? What's this dumb apple? No. You can find a comprehensive list of all of that elsewhere. Today, I just want to take it easy and go on a visual tour of the places you can visit in Crisis Core. Dirge of Cerberus may have given us our first 3D look into these iconic places, but Crisis Core stuck more closely to the floor plans of FF7, letting us see what these same places would look like in 3D. A good example of this is Chocobo Bill's farm. Here, we have our usual scenery with the fenced-in area, only with a fly-eye replacing the dancing chocobos. Past the field, all the background elements are in the right place, with the exception of the well being missing. The house, silo, and barn are translated into 3D in an almost one-to-one -one scale, though the house, and more importantly the barn, can't be accessed in Crisis Core. Switching over to Reunion, the name of the Crisis Core remake, we'll see the scale of the PSP Crisis Core locations are retained, but there's quite a difference in just how the game looks. There are small details, but I think it's fun to look close and point them out. The windows, roof color, and shape of the roof on the house are all different. The silo is sleeker, and the barn is less rounded with the structural beams more pronounced. It's a bit emptier too, with the chocobo stalls being removed. At least the painted chocobo logo is a bit more distinct. I think the biggest change though, and probably the least significant, is that the door into the house has been moved from the center of the main wing to the end of this protruding room. Okay, with that all covered, there's much more than meets the eye. Because Crisis Core was made in 3D, we can see the areas behind us, so we're no longer constrained by the pre-rendered backdrops. We'll see mountains, a lake, some roads, perhaps a view of what the surrounding world map area would look like if it was in true scale. Switching over to Reunion, we'll see the same area, just in much greater detail of course, this makes me wonder again about the world map area, only this time in regards to Rebirth, the second part of the FF7 remake. Will the path from Calm to here look like this, in a sort of open world type environment? Or will each area only be connected through cutscene without actually traversing it? I'm curious to find out. Last note for the Chocobo farm, you can explore this field area to an extent, but this is just an exception to the rule. Most other locations featured 
do stick strictly to the FF7 layouts in terms of walkability. There's lots of places to check out in Crisis Core, though I'm mostly interested in visiting the ones present in FF7. We can technically go to Wutai in Crisis Core, but it's not the village area, so we won't stay long. Though it is neat to meet Yuffie here. I'm Wutai's greatest warrior. Modeoheim is a similar situation. It's meant to be south of Icicle Inn. They're not the same town, but there are some similarities. Well, mostly the snow. But man, if it's not a pretty place. The sunset is more prominent in the old game, but the lighting kind of makes up for it in the new one. But let's take it back home. Since it is headquarters, we'll be returning to the Shinra building time and time again. The first thing we'll notice between the two Crisis Cores is the dramatic difference in lighting. The old one is more neutral, like in the original FF7, and the new one is darker, shinier, and lets the lights stand out a lot more, matching the style of the remake Shinra building. Glancing out the window, we'll get a great view of the city of Midgar. Reactors 4 and 5 are visible in the old game, and reactors 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all visible in Reunion. The lights of the city are incredible, though we do get less of a view of the plates holding it all together. Here's some stills showing off some sections of the soldier floor. Here's a world map that's way brighter in the new game. And even the elevators look amazing now. They really make it hard to forget what floor you're on. In the PS1 game, you don't have access to floor 49, but we can look at the ground floor in each. Here's the exhibition room. It's connected to the lobby in FF7, but both Crisis Cores have it sectioned off. FF7 Remake's showroom is once again merged with the lobby, but it also has a dividing wall that can be toggled off. Though I won't focus much on the Remake's Shinra building since I've yet to finish that video. We can get a closer look at some exhibits. This here is an empty showcase in Crisis Core. In Reunion, it's empty all the same. In FF7, it appears to be more of a fountain. The PA-86 has gotten quite the revision. It's also a bit different than advertised. The Hardy Daytona has been given a sleeker design, and it may look a bit familiar. The SA-37 looks a bit boxier these days. This one might also look familiar. The classic Highwind. They've cleaned it up quite a bit. Imagine taking to the skies in that. And then, the Shinra number 26 rocket. I don't think that's to scale. Sid has supposedly begun training already, but really? It should be me in there. Shinra took away my dreams of going to space. Yeah, something tells me that that won't end up working out anyway. Last thing really to note is we get a much better view of the world map. This was just a sign in the PS1 game. The lobby is a pretty straightforward pass-through area, though there's still some sights to see. This sign in the middle has been modernized to display screens. That Shinra sign is consistent in each, though the dash is taken out in Reunion. FF7 also didn't have the reception desk there, instead having two smaller ones at the entrance. The carpet on the stairs goes from blue to red in each, with FF7 being the only one accessible past the second floor. Crisis Core gave us tables up here, 
which were carried over to Reunion, might be a nice place to throw in a cafeteria. And lastly, we have those classic glass tube elevators. Though, just like an FF7, we'll have to take the normal lifts up. But we were on our way out anyway. Neither version of Crisis Core shows us the front entrance, though it would look something like this. Instead, we're taken straight to Sector 8. So leaving the Shinra building takes us to the Sector 8 Fountain Plaza. And although in-game we warp here instantly, it's not exactly a direct route. If we turn to the right, we can see that monolithic building further in the distance. It's a bit odd to me, the way to get there is just some lonely back alleyway, but I suppose it works well enough. Here's the fountain in each. And the clock in each. In the original FF7, a Mount Colts Easter egg can be seen on this billboard. This was carried over to Crisis Core, and then to Reunion, but I couldn't find it anywhere in 7 Remake. The tracks can be seen in this area below, likely the spot where Cloud jumps onto the train. This residential area is one screen transition away in 7, and a bit more distance down in the remake. Crisis Core does give us some additional alleyways around here that will lead us to the station, but we've got to check out Loveless first. Loveless again. Loveless Avenue is Midgar's theater district, and as iconic as it is, it's a pretty straightforward area. The billboard is similar in each, though the dates are naturally different as the games take place years apart. So it's 719 in Crisis Core and Reunion, and 625 in FF7 and its remake. Goblin's Bar is a place I like a lot, solely from its name. It's here in Crisis Core, Reunion, and FF7. Well, until it gets destroyed. It's absent in Remake, at least in name, and even the street is curved in a way that it's not in the others, though the rubble in FF7 makes it difficult to say for sure which is correct. Robson's is a niche, though Remake has it across the street in the form of a cafe. And finally, that Mako leak from FF7. The area is accessible, but there's no leak yet. In 7, it can be seen even after the destruction, and in Remake, the area is accessible but no Mako can be found. Though this path does reveal the location of the Sector 8 station that we never end up reaching in any game. I would like to note that the proximity between Loveless Avenue and the Fountain Plaza is consistent in each game, and even the distance between Loveless and Sector 1 is similar in the remake, though it may not feel that way because of the detours we have to take. Anyway, let's catch a ride at the Sector 1 station. A nice glimpse of the number one reactor. This station platform is one of the most iconic locations in the FF7 compilation, though you spend such little time here. That's true in Crisis Core as well, mostly just used as a pass-through into the Sector 5 slums. Though, I'd like to take an alternate route to follow more closely with the story. I always found it strange they had Zack meet Aerith by crashing through the church in the same way Cloud re-met her in Seven. What are the chances? Seems Aerith just has boyfriends falling from the sky. The interior of the church is similar in each, though the stained glass above the doors in Reunion is a nice touch. That back room is not accessible in Crisis Core but we do get a glimpse of those rafters up above. There's even a piano added in Reunion, similar to Seven Remake having a piano, though they're on opposite sides of the doorframe. Heading outside, we'll see a major change in scenery. This area here is actually what inspired me to make this comparison video. Crisis Core Reunion 
changes the visuals for much of Sector 5 to more closely fit with the look of the remake Sector 5 slums. In the PSP Crisis Core, this area is heavy on the cement. There is some rubble in the form of these metal beams, but mostly it's an open, empty area. We get a good view of the plate's pillar, as well as the massive central pillar holding up Sector Zero. The area next to the church leaves no rubble to be walked across in the unlikely event you need to escape some Turks or something. Though I do like that the barrier to the outside is this massive chunk of the church's architecture. In Reunion, this is replaced with construction barriers, and the wall of the destroyed building to match the 7 remake. Shanty houses are placed right next to the church for easy roof access, and the pillar can still be seen, though it's not easy to see the center structure. The church itself seems more of a cozy small town church in FF7, but Advent Children is responsible for switching it to a more Romanesque cathedral. And that change is carried over to Crisis Core, Reunion, and Seven Remake. Upon reaching the road to the slums market, Aerith has us look towards the sky. Er, what would be the sky. It's very sheltered and dark in Crisis Core though Reunion switches it out for the 7 remake plate structure, with the gaps in between and the broken Sector 6 section. I guess now would be a good time to note that the PSP Crisis Core restricts us to X-axis movement, so it's not easy to take in each area's details. But Reunion gives us full camera control, so we can set our sights up high and view everything from where we stand. Crisis Core added a huge gate to Sector 5 that is not seen in FF7. This was carried over to Reunion, and is even in 7 Remake, though it's more metal than cement. But let's head towards the park before going in. This wall is heavily graffitied in FF7. Crisis Core retains some of that, and then Reunion is toned down even more, though that zag tag and good luck can be seen throughout the remake. This path will lead us through the collapsed tunnel in FF7, but is not seen in either Crisis Core. I'm not sure if it's implied Zack runs through it off screen, or if there's simply a better route that hadn't been blocked off yet at the time. What complicates this a bit more is that the remake completely moved this section to the other side of the Sector 5 town. But whatever path we take, we end up at the Sector 6 park all the same. The layout is much the same in each, with the Moogle slide, the other Moogle, swings, drinking fountain, and utility building. But the swings have some railing in the reunion, and the heaps of junk look a lot more unsafe for a children's park. The gate to Sector 7 is shut in FF7, open but blocked in Crisis Core, and open but not blocked in Crisis Core Reunion. The path to Wall Market is blocked off in both instances for Zack. Alright, playtime's over, let's head to the market. Final Fantasy VII introduced Sector V's town as a sort of ring shape, with buildings in the center you can circle around, and a similar pattern lining the outside to match. This is also the central layout in both Crisis Cores, with only the visuals being the separating factor. On the PSP, these doorways emit a strong blue light, similar to this door in the PS1 game, though there's no going inside. Shopping Paradise has a less flashy sign these days, though Item World does look more like a shop stall rather than a garage. Though I'm happy to report that this weird metal thing is present in every single version. When playing Crisis Core, either version, it can be easy to mistake this upper path for the one that leads to Aerith's house. I mean, FF7 has two exits from the town, and we just came from the lower one. 
but if we look closely, we'll see a TV and a light up above that is also featured in FF7's Sector 5, though it's an untraversable path. This is further backed up by the fact that this exit is to the left of the shop bus, whereas Aerith's house path is to the right of it. That would put Aerith's house beyond this cement wall in both Crisis cores, making me wonder how she gets home each night. Going through the path mentioned will transport us to the Sector 1 station we were at before, implying there's another station near Sector 5. We won't find one in FF7, but the remake did put one in, only it's on the road to the church, not north of the slums. This path below the TV is also accessible in the remake, though instead of the Crisis Core station, it leads us on a road towards Wall Market, and that tunnel path is there as a detour. To finish off the slum section, I want to point out that it is always night above the plate, and it's always day below it. I guess the only explanation for this is the trains move so incredibly slow that a half day passes between trips, though somehow, I doubt that's the case. Let's say goodbye to Midgar by peeping out this bench and vending machine, and head on out on one of our story missions. Here, we arrive at Junin. Hollander is in Junon now. The 8th level detention center in Upper Junon. Junon Marine Mako Reactor Area. Junon Marine Mako Reactor. Or Junon. That'll be hard to get used to. As always, the visuals in Reunion have been improved over the PSP version. Though I was hoping for a bit more, as I'm guessing part 2 of the remake will have a heavy emphasis on this military base. Though to be fair, we are limited to the scope of the default Crisis Core. We don't spend a significant amount of time here to begin with. Anyway, we start out on one of the lower roads. The layout is much the same as in FF7, though none of the shops or alleyways are accessible. Reunion has a bit of a reddish hue over the look of the PSP game. That could be from all the fiery destruction, or from that crimson sunset in the sky. It's sundown in all versions of Junin, even in FF7 where you can admire it from the dock. There's various levels to Junin, but they more or less look the same. Though it is incredible seeing that massive Mako Cannon up close in 3D. Let's take the gondola up. There's still a red banner in both Crisis Cores, but it of course doesn't have any mention of President Rufus on it yet. Not much up here to see besides Cisne, and the familiar looking barriers. So onward to the airport. We've got this awning in all three games, though now it's labeled Inspection Station, and of course, the lift to get up to the runway. We can see that the high wind is stationed here, or at least a different airship in Crisis Core that's similar. This danger sign is read pretty clear in Reunion, but in Crisis Core there's a Square Enix website link if you look closely enough. Hmm, interesting. In the original game, we hop onto a cargo ship from Junin, so let's check that out in Crisis Core. Now, this is only access through missions, and it's likely not even the same one from FF7, but it's still cool to take a look. Above deck, it's a cloudy day at sea, but Reunion turns up the gloominess. The water's no longer gently cascading by, but is now rushing quite fast in comparison. The safety boats are still in place, and the landing zone is there, though a lot less green. Heading inside, the lighting is very dramatic, just like at the Shinra building, and is neutral in the PSP game. Here are some benches, and what might be a storeroom. But the nicest part of the ship is the dining hall. 
That red floor is now a shiny checkerboard tile. The tables have more evidence of being used. And best of all, the bar is stocked with a bit more variety. Though as much as I'd like to stay and have a drink, we're just now arriving at our destination. Costa del Sol, the iconic vacation time destination. Relaxing fun and sun! The cargo ship takes us here in FF7, though the order in Crisis Core is a bit different. This beachside town is accessed only in cutscene, save for a little battle arena on the sand. From down here, we can hardly see anything on the PSP as our camera is locked to the ocean. But Reunion gives us a little glimpse of the resort. Though the cutscenes are our best option, Reunion made a few surprising changes for this being such a small part of the story, but here we go. The sandy looking stairs are now a sandstone textured rock. Though the classic surfing suntan sign is happily still displayed. In the missions is where the changes really stand out. First thing is, the sandy floor has been replaced with brick. That entry arch is looking incredible with its castle-like detail, and the lettering has been confined to this small wooden plaque. The corner bar has been given a similar treatment, looking more like a townhouse. And the structure of the inn has been completely redone. Guess it does look more upscale, but also a bit less iconic. Oh well, vacation's over. Our next location is a total game changer. Cloud and Tifa's hometown, Nibelheim. So we do get a glimpse of it in 7 Remake, though that's even further in the past, so we'll not focus on it today. One thing I really like about Crisis Core is that it sticks very closely to that flashback sequence in Calm. The obvious exception is it features Zack, not Cloud. Here's that Nibelheim entrance, lined with fences. That old car on the right is carried over to Crisis Core, though that is not present in Reunion, but we do get more detail on these houses. The dialogue with Sephiroth is similar. To be home after all this time. I have no hometown. I wouldn't know. Uh... What about family? My mother's name is Genova. She died shortly after I was born. My father... <laughs> Why am I talking about this? Come on, let's go. But even talking to these two infantrymen is carried over. Practice? Oh, you mean posing. You'll get in trouble for snooping around. And then speaking with... Uh... Him. You never know when monsters will appear, right? Even the photographer. I have no interest in taking pictures of... Minor figures. But let's stick to the location before anything else. That water tower is a staple of Nibelheim. And beyond that is the metal tower present in each. But to the right, we have Cloud's house, which you can visit in the flashback, but not in the actual past. Though we do get an invitation to visit that we never follow up on. Tifa's house next door, that again, we're not visiting a Zack. And beyond that, a house with an impressive walkway in FF7 that is instead a road to the Nebel outskirts in Crisis Core. It's cool they added on to the town, though you don't do much here. And finally we have the inn and the general store. The signs aren't very legible in the PS1 game, but they look fine on the PSP and more stylized in Reunion. We again can't go in the store, but the inn is open to us. The people inside are different, but let's look at each lobby.
And upstairs, the beds more closely resemble the original patterns on the PSP, but Reunion made them pretty neutral. But looking back at FF7, the nest egg photo is even in place years before they came up with the Seven Wonders. Ooh, scary! That can't be right! Can it? Advancing the story will bring us to Mount Nebel. This is summarized with photographs in Crisis Core. The path to get here in FF7 has this overworld path, where Crisis Core has it connect to the outskirts. And it's looking really fierce in the original. Both Crisis Cores tone this mountain down a little. In 7, we watch the bridge break and have to take the long way. Crisis Core has a shortened path, though we can still seek out that broken bridge in the field. A really nice view of the sunset, and an even nicer view of the reactor. Here's the inside view in each. I'll skip the story details here, as I'm sure Rebirth will give these scenes plenty of things to point out. Let's head to the mansion. The outside. Crisis Core has it set back a bit from the town. And inside. Plenty of rooms to explore in FF7. Many of these doors are shut in Crisis Core, though we can peep through the keyholes in a way that may look familiar. We can even zoom in, though I'm not sure how his eye can zoom. This safe is a classic element. And this round room with the plants has been changed to a standard bedroom with banora apples. The secret stairs. We don't climb them in Crisis Core, but they can be seen if we turn around. Here's the cave-like catacombs. This door to the side can't be accessed in the flashback, but coming here later will give Cloud the chance to open it. Though getting the keys is made so much easier as Zack. And the big reveal. I should probably leave him alone. In the back room, I love how even the angle in the hallway was recreated. Though Crisis Core puts a door between the lab and the study. So one thing leads to another, and now the town is on fire. So Cloud, I mean Zack, comes out of the manor to see the flames in FF7, but Crisis Core has us leaving the inn. Here is Sephiroth in the fire. Reunion doesn't look too much better than the PSP, but the 7 remake gives us a high quality look. But some time passes, and it's four years later. One important detail of the PS1 game is the rebuilt town isn't an exact replica. The difference is in the pavement, dirt in the past, and brick in the present. The PSP Crisis Core didn't account for these changes, so I was hoping Reunion would have. Nope, it's dirt in both. Though to be fair, even in FF7, the entrance remains the same both before and after the rebuild. So I guess they rebuilt literally every other detail of the town and came back at a later date to do the flooring. Okay then. Well now we're on the run, let's give Gungaga a visit. Behind you, <laughs> so predictable. Couldn't you guess your hometown would be the first place we'd look? So we actually start out at the destroyed reactor. It's kept its traversable Y-shaped paths, though there's not a whole lot to look at. Heading to town, it's hard to line up Crisis Core's Gangaga to the one in the original FF7. If the cemetery is at the town's entrance, then this closed off section should be the village we all remember. Actually, all of the town is closed off, with yellow tape even wrapping the houses. It would be nice to drop in and visit Zack's parents, but that would get us captured, so we'll just have to meet them as Cloud instead. 
Crisis Core added on the hills area, which I'm guessing relates to this big plateau on Seven's world map. Standing in the river, we can see a bit of the town on the PSP, but not so much in Reunion. Though visibility is better on the top of the hill, it is hard to make out the reactor though, where in the old version, it's seen pretty clearly. But it's time to leave home now, and visit our final location. Now I said I wanted to stick mainly to FF7 locations, but Bonora is the exception. It's an iconic little town, and it's nice seeing the weird trees now in HD. Here's the town. See? The wreaths are now on the doors? Okay, the real reason I wanted to visit Bonora is to consider its inclusion in the FF7 Remake project. Well, in one form or another. I mean, the remake's already not shy about plastering Bonora references all over. It of course wouldn't be for a main quest, but a little extra side mission to retrieve Genesis's beautiful red sword. Could be a neat little bonus. Plus, I'm interested in how this scene will play into the remainder of the remake, since Deep Ground is now in it. But speaking of remake, one thing I was glad to see is that the Crisis Core ending goes unchanged in Reunion, giving me hope that Rebirth will at least try to keep things a little tame. I mean, I still don't understand the whole Zack situation, but that will come in due time. Though there is one change in the ending I want to point out. Even though Reunion simply upscales some of the full motion scenes, the gold-hilted Advent Children Buster Sword has been swapped out to more closely resemble the original sword and the version seen in 7 Remake. Also, even though there's lots of criticism going around about the voice work, I really only have gripes with one character, and even then, I feel a good amount of the lines are delivered fine enough. But here, I'll show you one vocal change that's surely for the better. Following the credits, we get a recreation of the FF7 opening. Actually, it's the 2005 PS3 tech demo showing the scene of Aerith. Reunion uses the same bit of livestream footage, but then presents us an edited version of the FF7 remake opening. Though the scene of Cloud on the train is unique to Crisis Core, and it's worth noting that the To Be Continued still says Final Fantasy VII, not Final Fantasy VII Remake. But that's all I've got for you today. I'm a huge fan of Crisis Core, so to see it get a remake, remaster, whatever treatment is pretty dang cool. I think the only thing I'm left wishing for is to see it expanded some, like the remake did for Seven, to spend more time with Zack and Aerith, or Zack and Cloud, or to see more Cisne, or more of the Soldier Trio would be a delight. Though, I understand them not wanting to bloat the game up too much, and we may get all of that in Rebirth, though I can't help but feel guilty for potentially cheating death. Though, we'll see how all of that plays out in due time. In the meantime, if you liked this video, or like Final Fantasy VII in general, I'd like to recommend you watch my Final Fantasy VII comparison series. I go in depth to all the similarities and differences between VII and its remake, all divided by location. Though keep in mind, the first few episodes are some of the oldest on my channel, so the quality only increases with each video. But with all of that being said, thanks for joining me on this tour, and I hope to see you around.